Hello, I'm Claire, founder of Equine Breathing. What is Equine Breathing? Well, if you're concerned about your horse, you've come to the right place because Equine Breathing enables people like you to help their horses recover from a wide range of things. These include chronic ailments such as head shaking and asthma and behavioural problems such as anxiety, cribbing and hypersensitivity. Equine breathing is an holistic method and doesn't require drugs or supplements. And since it's not a veterinary procedure, it can be used by anybody. It works with the body's natural physiological processes and trains the horse to develop a natural breathing pattern. You may feel that your horse already has a natural breathing pattern, but studies in horses and humans have shown that many habitually overbreathe without realising it. And overbreathing has a direct and damaging effect. Some of you may have noticed that you or your horse are breathing heavily. Some of you may even have read or heard of the book Breath by James Nestor, which describes how overbreathing has become common and how it damages people's health. The first person to discover the direct connection between breathing pattern and health was a Russian professor called Konstantin Buteyko. In the 1950s, as a young doctor, Buteyko started to notice that the closer people were to death, the more they increased their breathing. After a while, he was able to precisely predict when death would occur based on the volume of air being breathed. His first research study was of elderly people. He found that all those with good breathing, i.e. normal breathing, had no chronic degenerative illnesses at all, whereas those that overbreathed usually had some sort of illness. Buteyko himself then developed acute hypertension and was given only a short time to live. He rapidly developed a way of reducing his own breathing and contrary to expectations, not only did he survive, he recovered. He then worked with all sorts of ill people, showing them how to reduce the damaging overbreathing and regain their health. His Buteyko breathing method was made a first line of treatment for respiratory diseases such as asthma and emphysema in Russia. Today, the Buteyko method is used worldwide by people who prefer to recover from their illness rather than use drugs to control or mask symptoms. Buteyko spent 50 years studying the biochemistry of breathing and how it affects the physiology. He said that in all his 50 years of work, he never ever found a case where illness was not accompanied by overbreathing. James Nestor, in his book Breath, chronicles the work of many other scientists with similar views on the importance of not overbreathing. Buteyko was very fond of horses and studied respiration in horses as well as other domestic animals. I was driven to develop equine breathing many years ago when my horse started head shaking. As the symptoms got worse, it was more and more distressing for both of us, as you can imagine. My vet made every effort to help, but if you have any experience of head shaking, you'll know how difficult this can be and how heartbreaking. I knew from my own experience that improving my breathing enabled me to recover my health after 15 years of illness. But you can't explain to a horse that reducing their over-breathing habit would be beneficial. I had to figure out a way to show him. I tried various different approaches and found some that seemed to work. I was very encouraged when he started to relax and enjoy the training. Soon, to my utter delight and relief, not only did his head shaking start to improve, but other significant benefits developed. 
His recovery was so impressive that I felt this technique could benefit lots of horses. In those early days, I tried equine breathing on horses with symptoms as diverse as wind sucking and sweetage and got similar improvement. Seeing the benefits it offered, I left my career in nature conservation and became fully committed to helping as many people as possible to help their horses. Since then, people have used equine breathing to help their horses recover from a very wide range of problems. These include asthma, allergies, cough, head shaking, Cushing's, sweetage, anxiety, stress, wind sucking, leather, lethargy, digestive problems, skin conditions, weight problems, under or overweight, sarcoids, hypersensitivity, and more. It's important to remember that equine breathing is not a treatment for specific symptoms. It's actually a training that enables the horse to regain their health by themselves. So the details of the symptoms are not important to equine breathing. And equine breathing is not affected by or involved with diagnosis which is one reason why it's not classed as a veterinary technique. Based on Buteyko's findings, it seems unlikely that a horse with symptoms could have normal breathing. Therefore, it is likely that equine breathing will help most horses. In my 20 plus years of experience, many horses have made good recoveries. Even horses for whom euthanasia had been prescribed have made good recoveries. Obviously, there may be some horses that are too damaged to recover, but I feel that it's always worth trying equine breathing, as it's easy, enjoyable for the horse and costs nothing. And the horse may at least get some comfort and some improvement, if not full recovery. So I feel confident in saying that if you can help your horse to improve their breathing, then they are likely to improve. However, there is one prerequisite for the horse to be able to improve their breathing. This is that the horse needs to feel safe enough to relax and enjoy the equine breathing training in order for the body's biochemistry to change for the better. Since equine breathing is inherently relaxing, this is usually not a problem, or not a problem that can't fairly readily be solved. But there may be cases where the owner, due to circumstances beyond their control, is unable to help the horse feel safe enough. This might be, for example, if the owner is ill and weak, which is upsetting for the horse, or the horse finds something in their living conditions stressful, for example stabling, a difficult field mate, or isolation. Fortunately, these cases are unusual. With equine breathing, you'll learn how to help your horse develop a more normal breathing pattern. It's easy to get started using the free instructions for the simple one in or one nostril technique. You'll also learn how to manage an effective healing process. Although there can often be almost immediate results, equine breathing is not magic. It can stimulate and support the body's healing processes, but this is a biological process and takes time to complete. In a later podcast, I'll be talking you through exactly how to get started with equine breathing with your horse. But meanwhile, you can check out this information on the website. In the next podcast, we'll be hearing from a newbie about what it's like to get started with equine breathing. Remember that starting equine breathing is free. It doesn't cost anything to try it. The free instructions and much more are available at www.equinebreathing.com and if you have any questions, you can contact me there. Bye for now.